I've written a console program to do the performance measurements and um, I'm using a base class called performance test right here to run the performance uh, the different performance tests um, I have three method, methods here, measure test A, measure test B, and measure test C. So these are virtual methods, and in um, any derived class, I will put the test code in here. And the format is always that the, the first one, test A, is the baseline test. So this would be unmodified, uh, slow code. And then we have two methods, B and C, available to try out different kinds of optimizations. And then for the actual performance test down here, um, the performance test is fairly simple. Basically what I do is um, I go through these test A, test B, and test C methods, and I repeat them a number of times. So you can see there's a constant here, default repetitions, with a value of 10. Um, I basically repeat the test 10 times to average out the effects of the garbage collector, um, because you know an ill-timed collection of the garbage collector can really slow down one of the tests. So if we just run it 10 times, then we average out that effect. To measure performance, um, you're supposed to use the stopwatch class in C Sharp. So when you're doing benchmarking, please don't use date time. Uh, always use stopwatch because uh, stopwatch is a specialized class for uh, measuring time spans extremely accurately. So you can see I always start by um, restarting a stopwatch, um, doing the test, stopping the stopwatch, and then um, I have the elapsed milliseconds right here, and I'm adding that to a variable. And then in the end, you can see right here, I'm returning that total value divided by the number of repetitions. So we're doing 10 repetitions, so you know uh, we have the total elapsed time for every method, and then um, divided by the number of repetitions gives you the average execution time. So um, let's get started. I have the program running right here. Um, so it's a console program with eight tests uh, pre-configured, and I can simply select a test and run it. So you can see the first one is exceptions. Let me go, go back to the code. I'll show you the code. So the exception test is right here. So you can see it's, it's just a class that derives from performance tests. So I get to implement these measure A and measure B methods. Um, so what I'm doing, check this out here in the constructor. What I'm doing is I'm filling a list um, of 1,000 strings. So I've got a, a list of strings, 1,000 strings. And every element in the list is a number. Um, the number has five digits, so I pick them from this list at random, and you can see I have an X here at the end. So what this code does is it mixes digits together to create random numbers, and one in 11 digits um, is going to be an X, which will make any number invalid. So 9% um, of my list element population is going to be invalid and won't be able to be parsed. So what does my test do? Uh, you can see right here, test A does a simple int.parse and catches any format exception. And test B does int.tryparse. And that's basically the only difference. So let me run the code and we can see what happens. So I'm running test 0, uh, 100 iterations, and I include the baseline. So here we go. So now it's doing the test and then doing it 10 times to average out any effects. Uh, and it will show us the results in a little graph. Uh, when it's done. Here you go. So you can see that the um, slowdown of um, an exception in Intel parse is massive. You can see we're looking at an execution time of 1.094 seconds for the parse function, and the try parse is 9 milliseconds. So this is a massive difference in performance. And uh, keep in mind, only 9% of the numbers were invalid. So if you have a much higher uh, failure rate in your data, much higher number of invalid uh, um, fields in your data, um, exceptions are really going to slow down your code. So the takeaway here is um, don't um, swallow exceptions in your code. Don't catch an exception and don't do anything with it. Um, if you're parsing a lot of data, um, make sure that you validate the data before you try to parse it and don't do it the other way around where you first parse the data and then catch the exception and then in the catch block um, you know you you recover your code I mean you can do that but it will really slow down the execution of your code exceptions are super slow they take um, roughly one microsecond to execute 
um, and I mean it's incredibly slow and that's because they're intended for debugging purposes they do uh, they capture the stack trace they capture the context of the executing thread and they prepare all this debug information so uh, they're not they're not supposed to be thrown in mission critical loops in your code so first takeaway um, don't catch exceptions um, avoid exception throwing as much as you can in mission critical codes 